Okay, test setup three, same uh, ground plane and same setup as before, but rather than injecting a uh, high voltage transient pulse, we are now using an ESD gum to inject some ESD event. Uh, so we're using contact, contact discharge and we set the voltage level to be 500 volts, just some low voltage level, okay? And then we'll again capture any uh, ESD event uh, during the um, discharge. Okay. Here is the result of the test we just did. As it can be seen here, the um, purple trace, which is channel three, um, again, um, resonates a lot and didn't represent um, any shape or form of this CST discharge. So we can actually uh, remove this. And if we just compare the two RF current probes, you can see they picked up the noise, well, the ESD discharge current waveform, pretty much the same. You can see that um, although the 100 megahertz bandwidth RF current probe, again, um, have some big resonance, whereas the 500 or 600 megahertz one uh, doesn't have that. So there's some difference um, between these two RF current probes. Again, in terms of these fast rising um, edge um, signals, we tend to trust more of the uh, much wider bandwidth one, in this case, channel one, uh, rather than channel two. So from the uh, second experiment and third experiment, when we apply fast rise, high voltage uh, pulse, we notice that this um, DC to 100 kilohertz current probe uh, shows some uh, current waveform which has a big resonance in it and so what caused that resonance and we know it is not the true current waveform so what caused it it is related to a very important factor for a current probe which we'll discuss in a in a separate video next time but to give you a, an idea uh, it is related to the electric field shielding capability of a current probe so the idea is very simple. When you make a current probe, uh, probe, the main purpose is to measure current, which is related to magnetic field. And you don't want to pick up any noise uh, caused by electric field. So for uh, RF current probes, manufacturers often put lots of effort trying to shield the electric field so it doesn't pick up the electric field. Whereas for this uh, low bandwidth current probe, the focus is not really to put lots of shielding uh, for the E-field. And when you apply a, a pulse, such as a ESD pulse or a high voltage transient uh, pulse, uh, because of the sharp rise time, the spectrum actually is very wide, so it extends sometimes beyond one gigahertz. That's why um, when you have a, a, when, when a signal travels at such a high frequency, the magnetic field and electric fields uh, uh, traveled, required for traveling is the same. So that's why if we have a current probe such as this uh, nearby, it will probably pick up the uh, electric field as well as the magnetic field. Okay, we just mentioned that one of the uh, important aspects of current probe is the capability of shielding the electric field. So to demonstrate what does that mean, we're going to use air discharge to discharge um, this circuit. And then we use um, uh, the RF current probe to capture the waveform. In the meantime, we'll have the other two uh, probe really just put in here and then to see if they picked up any noise during this uh, uh, discharge event, okay? So let's do it. Aha, uh -huh, look. This is what we meant. So we just saw a, a, a discharge, air discharge event into this circuit. Obviously, this um, current probe will still measure the, uh, the, the current. In this case, of course, the current is quite huge and it's already over the, the limits of this scale. But you can see here, channel two is actually this, this current probe. It didn't pick up anything, whereas channel three, we're using this probe, it picked up lots of noise as well. So if I um, disable zoom, you can see um, 
see that the blue trace is zero was the channel three lots of ringing and this is just showing you this probe has some you know you, you can do the basics dc to 100 kilohertz but in terms of high frequency i think the e-field shielding of this probe is not ideal it picks up lots of uh, uh, fields in the uh, ambient now lots of people notice that i i, I have quite a few um, current probes especially I have a pair of matched current probes. So in the future, we'll, we'll show you more demonstration of how useful uh, a matched pair of current probes uh, are for troubleshooting purposes. This example demonstrates how we, how we know that the matched current probes are actually matched. So as you can see here, we, again, we have the two uh, current probes. So these two are matched. So they are, uh, in terms of accuracy, they are pretty much close. And uh, we put up an insulation layer between the two just to decouple the, any magnetic coupling or e electric uh, coupling between these two current probes. And then um, in this case, we are going to inject some ESD current into this um, resistor. Okay, as we can see from the result, this is the result. Let's just stop it. Okay, and um, if I... Put this in the center. You can see it's not a hundred percent, you know, closely matched. But rather than tiny phase shifts and some bits here, the majority of the uh, waveform uh, are almost the same. Now this little difference might be causing caused by you know this setup. Uh, so if I swap this one and then put the other one on the back, if I ha can see the color change, um, you know, just um, again um, changed, then um, they might be due to this this delay on the on the current path. But uh, overall, in general, this shows that these two current probes are matched quite well. Okay, so in this short session, we use three different examples to demonstrate the bandwidth of our RF. RF Current Pro. I hope you enjoyed it and you really liked the content. Please do not hesitate to share with your colleagues or your friends and uh, we're here for you for the next session.